A week has passed since the Las Vegas shooting tragedy. How the city is transitioning from response to recovery. Will Lexington Police, Fire, and Medical be prepared for a tragedy like Las Vegas? We talked with city leaders and have the answer for you coming up. Thousands are recovering after Hurricane Nate barreled through the Gulf Coast, where it's headed in the response coming up. I'm Ryan Ruff of Sports. After barely squeezing by Mizzou, how will the Cats use their much needed off week to get ready for Mississippi State? UK Student News Network Live at 4 starts now. We're past the response portion of this horrible incident. This is all about recovery now. Hello, I'm Cammie Moore. And I'm Lamar Smith. Thanks for joining us. Las Vegas is now in recovery mode, picking up the pieces from the devastating mass shooting. Literally, people who have left behind belongings at the site of the massacre can now go pick up the items that may have been left behind in their flee for safety. Also, hundreds of people are turning out at vigils around the country to honor the lives that, lost, that were lost just eight days ago. One of the concerns is that shooting is that the gunman was using bump stocks. That's a device that makes a semi-automatic weapon an automatic one. California Senator Dianne Feinstein has three, 38 co-sponsors for legislation banning bump stocks. Feinstein has attracted Republican interest but so far, all of the co-sponsors are Democrats. I think you have to walk before you run, and I do think this is an important moment. This is the first time that the gun lobby has shown willingness to come to the table, and I think that's in part because Americans just simply do not accept mass shooting after mass shooting happening and Congress doing absolutely nothing. The National Rifle Association has said it supports new laws restricting access to bump stocks. The NRA says the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and firearms and explosives should review bump stocks and if they should be illegal outside of military and government use. In response to what happened in Las Vegas, event managers in Lexington are looking into new safety measures. In the case of an active shooter, the Las Vegas shooting has left many wondering if current procedures are enough to keep spectators safe. Very hyper vigilant with, with what we do to prepare for those events, um, so we're pretty confident in how we set up a security plan for those events. We also have plainclothes officers who are undercover who roam the crowd um, that people don't know about. We also have obviously security cameras that are constantly running and we review tape. We're already very hyper vigilant with, with. The legends aren't the only one taking new steps to ensure safety for its spectators. The Southeastern Conference instituted a clear bag policy for all of its sporting events this off season. Fans can expect tougher precautions at the entrance gate moving forward. The natural question for people in Lexington is should we be concerned about our safety at big event venues? UK Student News Network's Tiffany Huffman talked to officials about this. Here's a report. The deadliest mass shooting in United States history occurred a little over a week ago. Tim Brandwee, the operations and recovery manager for the Lexington Public Safety Operations Center, says he has zero concern about Lexington police and fire handling a similar tragic situation. That's, they know how to do this. They train for it. We've exercised for this exact scenario. Lexington is home to one of only two level one trauma centers in the state of Kentucky, as well as six acute care hospitals. The Lexington Operations Center has a strategic plan for how casualties would be distributed and if necessary, who to relocate to local regional hospitals. We, we have a plan for how casualties would be distributed based upon how seriously people were injured. Uh, we also have a fallback plan to start relocating lesser injured perhaps to some of the regional hospitals. The Lexington Public Safety Operations Center has a Facebook and Twitter account that Tim Brandewee recommends residents check for verified information as well as where to go and what to do in such a situation. For more information as to how you can best prepare for a tragedy or other hazardous incidents such as ice storms, tornadoes, and flooding, you can visit BeReadyLexington.com. Lexington Public Safety's mission is to help keep Lexington a safe place to live, work, and play. Reporting live from the studio, I'm Tiffany Huffman, UK Student News Network. Lamar?
Thanks, Tiffany. Taking a look at national news, Hurricane Nate has been downgraded to a tropical storm as it moves toward the Ohio Valley. Now, the process of cleaning up the underway crews have already started clean cleaning up along the Gulf Coast. Workers in Gulf Shores, Alabama, are taking care of the mess left behind on the beaches. The, blood, the flooding caused by Hurricane Nate has left 67,000 homes across the Gulf without power. Remnants of Hurricane Nate are still producing heavy rainfall, causing possible travel delays in the Northeast. The Trump administration has discussed creating a DREAM Act. The DREAM Act would be a reform of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals programs created during the Obama administration. The list includes the wall, mandatory worker verification, and increased criminal penalties for Im immigration infractions. Yesterday, President Trump has entered a new Twitter war with Tennessee Senator Bob Corker after he announced his upcoming retirement from Congress. Corker called the White House, quote, an adult daycare center in response. This is just another issue between Trump and Corker since his election. Are you looking to get more sleep at night? Researchers say there is a new way to prevent insomnia. We'll have that next. And with the Wildcats' second, second nail-biting win in a row, they can reach 6-1 and one as they move on from Missouri onto Mississippi State. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us, when others are down, to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to OneAmericaAppeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to saving money, huh. what? Period. Don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. Credit Freeze can help you from protecting your data breaches. And there is a new solution to insomnia. Morgan Lloyd is in the studio with more. The Equivax data breach has 145 million people in danger of identity theft. But you can protect yourself by freezing your credit. It does not affect your credit score. A Credit Freeze blocks new lender access to stop from accounts from being made. Freezing costs vary from state to state. However, three bills have been introduced in Congress to make them free nationwide. Are you struggling to get a good night's sleep? Exercise may be the answer to your problem. Kim Hutcherson has more in today's Health Minute. More than 100 million Americans suffer from insomnia, but experts say exercise is a great way to beat sleep difficulties. Multiple studies indicate that physical activity can help you get to sleep faster and stay asleep longer without the risks associated with sleeping pills. Exercise can help those with sleep apnea too. Sleep apnea is a dangerous disorder that can cause a person to temporarily stop breathing at night. One study showed that exercise alone led to a 25% reduction in sleep apnea symptoms over a three-month period. Disturbed sleep can do more than just leave you groggy in the morning. It's a key risk factor for diseases and conditions like stroke, heart attack, high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity. Doctors recommend that everyone get two and a half hours of aerobic exercise weekly, along with strength or resistance training a couple of times a week. 
They say you should exercise at moderate intensity, meaning you can still talk but have to catch your breath every few sentences. Experts say consistency is key. Make sure you exercise regularly to get all the sleep-related benefits. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Restless sleep is a key risk factor for conditions like strokes, heart attacks, high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity. However, regular exercise can eliminate these factors. Reporting live from the studio, I'm Morgan Lloyd. Cammie and Lamar. Thank you, Morgan. The Real Star Athletes of the Weekend had four legs and raced their hearts out. See who I'm talking about after the break. I'm a single mother and I was the main one working, so I never thought that I could go back to school, you know. My sister, my mother, everybody wanted to help me with my kids. I could not have gone my diploma without my family. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. A nail biter this weekend for the Wildcats. Yes, I, the game was close. I don't know how they struggled so much versus a one and three team. UK football held their own against Missouri Saturday night, even through the nail biting last quarter. It was UK's second close win in a row as they defeated Mizzou with a score of 40 to 34. The Missouri Tigers came into the game ranked last in the SEC, but it was hard to tell as the, as they had an answer for every good play from the Cats. Kentucky was the first to take the lead with a 14-yard pass from Steven Johnson to Blake Bone. Missouri shortens Kentucky's lead in the middle of the second quarter with a 50-yard pass from Drew Locke to Jamon Moore. With a field goal from Tucker McCann, Missouri trailed 13-7. The two teams entered the fourth quarter tied 27-27 until Garrett Johnson scored a 64-yard pass from Steven Johnson. Missouri responded with a 75-yard pass from Locke to Jonathan Johnson to tie the game. After a UK field goal, Missouri had a chance to even it up at 37 points, but had their own 38-yard field goal blocked. The Tigers had several chances to tie and then win the game with under a minute left, but Kentucky's fierce defense made sure that didn't happen. Yeah, we, the guys have really worked hard. We've been in six stressful games, and they've worked hard during the week. We've had some hot weeks here lately in practice, and the guys have really worked hard, and um, they definitely need a, a little, little time here this week. Mentally, as much as anything. Yeah. UK football won't have another game until October 21st at Mississippi State, giving players much needed rest after six straight games. One player in particular who could use a break in the, in the upcoming week is UK's backup quarterback, Luke Wright. He was taken off the field by stretcher after a medical incident during the fourth quarter on Saturday. Stoop says Wright was transported to UK's hospital and was responsive. Yesterday, the Cats reclaimed the SEC Men's Soccer Championship after, after falling to South Carolina and Columbia last year. Through a steady rainfall throughout the game, UK and South Carolina both had quality offenses on UK's slippery pitch. Kentucky's Amy Mabika scored the winning goal with just seconds remaining and to give the Wildcats a 1-0 win. Women's soccer also came out with a win of 1-0 this weekend. Freshman Miranda Jimenez scored the only goal of Sunday's match at Mississippi State in the 58th minute. Jimenez's goal came from a wide runoff of Foster in Gafo, who served the middle of the box. Kentucky women's soccer will return on Thursday night at 7 p.m. against Missouri in Lexington. This weekend, you could find extraordinary four-legged athletes at Keeneland Racetrack as they open for their fall season. They're also reminiscing Keeneland's past and looking towards Keeneland's future. Fall is upon us, which means Keeneland Racetrack is open for business. This weekend was the fall season opener for one of Lexington's greatest traditions and had some visitors reminiscing on what Keeneland used to be like. 
time. There have been a lot of changes. Uh, it used to be when I first started coming here, they didn't have a track announcer. There weren't all these TVs around. It was um, just you and the track and the horses. Um, but some of the changes have certainly made it easier to watch the races. Kind of miss, miss the old days a little bit, but it's certainly still a lot of fun. Though many changes have been made, Brad Labore is still planning for the future of Keeneland. We're trying to make it more of a five-star type establishment than it was prior. Whether you're in the equestrian room, or you're in the Phoenix room, or you're in the Lexington room, uh, no matter where you're on the track, you know, every employee, every uh, patron, every person that works here is, is just stepping up their game. One thing Brad wants to see more of in the future is people coming out to enjoy themselves their way. I think that a lot of times the connotation out, out there is that, you know, it's, it's a little uppity and uh, you have to be uh, elite, some, uh, for lack of a better term. To be, I don't want anybody to think that. I mean, you, know, you come out here in shorts and a golf shirt and, and have a great day. If you want to come out dressed to the nines, come out dressed to the nines. Just enjoy yourself. I mean, to come out here and just walk around the grounds, it's a beautiful thing. With UK Student News Network, I'm Ryan Ruff. As you can see, the rain didn't keep people from watching the excitement. The Keeneland fall season will last until October 28th. Well, we'll be back after the break with weather. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%? That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? As we prepare for the week, what kind of weather can we look at this week, Matt? Uh, the weather's going to be okay. Um, uh, it's uh, going to it's going to be uh, it's going to be rainy for the first start of the week, and then uh, we're going to finish off with uh, it being sunny. So uh, it's going to be mostly cloudy today. Uh, it's light rain with a high of 76. Uh, tonight, it's supposed to be mostly cloudy with patchy fog and a low of 64. Tomorrow, it's supposed to rain. Uh, a cloud, uh, there's a, ch a thunderstorm chance, and then, uh, and then uh, the high is 76. Uh, a, a, ch a chance of showers on Wednesday, uh, partly sunny. Uh, with a high of 76. Uh, mostly sunny, uh, clear, a uh, high of 72. Uh, it's going to turn, uh, it's a bad week uh, starting out from Monday or where, but, and Tuesday and Wednesday, but it's going to be okay uh, for a Keeneland this weekend, for, uh, Thursday and Friday, so. Okay. Well, thanks. Hopefully the weather gets better with all the rain. The, the, annual, the annual Queer Slang Festival was back, and it's bigger than ever. The festival is now a week-long event happening right here on UK's campus. Today's activities include tabling by UK clubs and organizations. The Office of LGBTQ Resources is one organization participating in the festival. I think it's important because queer art needs to be like recognized for what it is and also showcased. Um, because we've expanded to be a full week this year, then there's plenty of opportunities to learn about this ever-changing LGBTQ community.
All right, thank you for joining us with UK Student News Network. I'm Cami Moore, Lamar, Matt, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so let's just talk for a few minutes. You guys did good.